the beginning of the video um or in the video i am going to be announcing the qualifications of the care package giveaway so in order for you to find out what is going to be going on with the care package giveaway or how to enter it make sure you stay tuned and watch the whole video okay guys welcome back youtube fam it's your girl adri of course i'm back with a new video i know i took like a week off i just need to get my thoughts and stuff together i really do apologize for not posting any video can't start the video without doing the shout out of the day shout out of the day goes to my girl best friend all of that good stuff sister her name is tavia cave yes girl you are my shout out of the day in this video thank you for letting me support you so now i am giving back and supporting you again thank you for supporting me so now i'm supporting you that's what i meant to say but um her business she's the small own um small black owned business and she does keychains so on this keychain i have the letter k i'll show you up close if you can see it um, on this one i have my initial that has an a which is right here and then i have a k which is right here let me put it up here a k and there's the a these are, are um me and my husband's initials um and then it comes with lip gloss um a gun type of thing it's just for decoration purposes and a puff ball and if you haven't ordered one yet, what are y'all doing? Go over there and check my girl out. Point blank, period. If y'all can support me, y'all can support her. And I really do appreciate it. And I know she will appreciate your business. So, and again, if you haven't checked my girl out, make sure you go over there and check her out. I love you, Tavia, and I hope you watch this video because, girl, I'm shouting you out, okay? Okay. <laughs> but anyway, let me jump into this video. In this video, I'm going to be doing a mukbang. And I, it's a Q&A mukbang of military life me being a military wife in that type of source so in this mukbang i have me some mussels i have mussels i have me some shrimpy shrimp and i have me some snow crab legs oh i forgot my scissors hold on y'all sorry y'all i had to go get my scissors honey i couldn't eat without my scissors i ain't about using my mouth my teeth honey to try to open no crabs up but let me oh i got me some butter right here i got it on the side um, um let me pray and then i can get into this goodness let me go ahead and pray thank you lord for this food that i'm about to receive let it be nourishment to my body mind and soul in jesus name i pray amen 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 but how y'all doing on tonight well today <laughs> i'm recording at night this is Night. Got me some good old chopsticks that don't even know how to use them. But I'm gonna try. <laughs> I'm gonna try. Let me see if I can pick this muscle up. Honey. Child, no. Oh. There it go. I didn't dip. Hold. Yeah. That's for the sushi anyway. I ain't gonna go for the Oh, I need to be our first bite. Here y'all go. Oh, that didn't drop. That's first bite, y'all. A shrimp. Thank you, Jesus. But how are y'all doing tonight? Let me eat a little bit. Because I ain't eat all day. Just because I knew I was going to make a video and this was going to be my video, so. These are good. Yeah. How y'all doing? on today if you're wondering how i'm doing i'm blessed honey i can't complain y'all watching me struggle how to 
Hold these chopsticks. But I can't complain, honey. The Lord has been good to me. Woke me up on this good morning. Um, got me throughout the day. So I can't complain, honey. I cannot complain. And y'all don't need to be complaining either. Because it could have been a different way. But the Lord saw fit. Hallelujah. These are actually different. I never had those sushi rolls. It just has like the vegetables and it has the yum yum sauce. And then it has like this little sauce on it, the sweet chili. Maybe I was supposed to add sweet chili to it. I'll dip it. I'll put it on the side. But we uh, no need to complain over here. He has kept me and my husband throughout the day. Get that over there. I never had this kind before. I always get the ones with the rice. The sushi with the rice. Ooh. Oh, and I got me some wine over here, but y'all can't see it. But I got me some nice of wine. To some red wine. Okay. So let's really start into this video. Okay. Let me chew this out. But the first question was, what is it like being a military wife? Mm. For me, being a military wife is not really that bad, actually. It does get stressful at times. I ain't gonna say that. I mean, it does It does get hard sometimes. Because certain things can't be discussed. And when my husband is like stressed out and I... Um, when he's stressed out and stuff, um, it kind of like bothers me, and I'll be wanting to know, and I know he can't tell me. But also, it's a unique experience being a military wife. I never thought I would be a military wife. You know what I mean? Who would have thought I would have been a military wife? It definitely does have its challenges because, you know, transitioning from being in the civilian world, ew, then coming to the military world is two different things. But it's it's a unique experience. Mm. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm hungry. Like, I starved myself for real. I ain't eat all day. Was it easier making friends with military wives? Yes. It definitely is. Because with me, I am a very, 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 very. What is that? Oh, I don't know what that was. With me, I'm a very outgoing person. Let me know me. I love people. So. Um, I, when I first got here, my first job was, I was working at Huddle House. Huddle House is a, um, a restaurant that was on post and that was my first job. And majority of all of the people that worked there was either um, military wives or you know have family that was in the military and you know yeah that was that um or who have experience being in the military and that's where they remained there like that's that was their home like after they retired that's where they wanted to live and so um 
when I first got there, of course, when you're in a new area, you get shy, you don't know anybody. But then after a while, honey, it was fun. I loved it. Um, I loved the people that I used to work with. Um, so yeah, it was really, really easy for me because I'm just that type of girl who love people. So. so next question was, what is there to do to keep yourself busy? I'm sorry, y'all, but I'm hungry. The Lord is blessing me with this food, honey. Mm -hmm. So, hey, guys, it's the next day. It's the next morning. I didn't get a chance to finish it last night due to the fact my camera died. And here I am trying to finish it. Um, so, I don't remember exactly what question I had left off with. Um, but I'll just start from, like, the fourth question, I guess. Um, because I don't remember exactly which one I was on. So, this one says, um, as a military wife, do you feel pressured or feel like you have to stay in shape because of your environment? Um, for me, that's a yes and a no. Because for a yes, I kind of do feel pressure because I see everybody else, um, you know, all fit, toned, you know, like the girls, there's young girls that's. My age that are in the military and they be looking good. No homo, but they be looking really good. Like they look nice and fit, all of that type of stuff. But then at the same time, I say no because I love the way I am. Like, you know, I gain a few pounds every now and then. You gain a few pounds. It's okay. You still got to have some self love just because you see somebody else. You got to first be self confident in yourself to love yourself no matter how you look. You know what I mean? So, for me, I say no. But also, yes, because I just... My husband pressures me to exercise and get healthy. But So, now I'm back on my little healthy um, fitness journey right now. Because I took a break. I did it... I started in, like, July. And I did a fitness challenge. And now I'm back at it. And I took, like, a break. Because um, I just needed some me time. And, like, try to focus on it. So, now... I did my run today, and I did pretty good. I did a really good job. I mean, I did a good job. So, yeah. Um, how often do you get to see your family? I don't get to see my family often. Like, not at all because of this whole virus situation. And just, you know, uh, finding time to try to see my family. The last time I seen my family was last year in September um for my grandma's retirement party that's the last time i see my family so i don't get to see them often but hopefully maybe for either thanksgiving or christmas i'll probably come home to visit my family just for the holidays cause, yeah are you in any military groups no i'm not in any military groups at the moment um, just due to the fact that I was in school at the time, so I didn't want to, like, commit to something and then not be able to finish it. But now I'm not in school, so I, I just still didn't want to get into anything because I really didn't know what I wanted to do while I was here. Um, so no, I'm not in any military groups. Where would you like to get stationed next if he re -enlist? Um, my two places that we've been talking about were Germany and Hawaii. That's my two places. I'm, how is it living on base? It's real different. It's not that much of a difference. Um, the only thing that gets to me living on base is every time you come in the gate, you have to scan your ID card. They have to scan your ID card. You know, make sure like, you know, you're good, you're set, and you know. It's just really different, but it's unique. It is. I like it, but that's the only thing that gets to me. Are the military housing only for families that are in the military base? No, they are not for just military families. They're for retirees, 
people who have already served our country. Um, they're for, like, say if um, contractors have, like, a certain time period that they have to stay here, instead of staying in, like, a hotel and stuff, they can actually buy, um, get a house on post, and they just pay rent, pretty much like that. Um, and, you know, if people, like, if there's people that work for the military, um, they are allowed to stay on post as well. And then also, like, the, the military families who are, you know, whoever's in the military, they get to stay on here. So it's not just for just military families. Are there any plans of PCSing anytime soon? I know there's a thing called e ETSing and PCSing. Um, PCSing, I think, is going to a different duty station. ETSing is getting out, I believe. I don't want to say um, that's right, but I don't know exactly. But that I think he, our contract is up in February. So we don't know what we're going to do next, honestly. So I can't really answer that question. But hopefully he realized. I want him to be in the list so I can go to Germany. That's all. <laughs> like, I'm tired of it, but I just want to go to Germany. <laughs> just for travel. Um, what helps you with dealing with deployment? Actually, my husband has not got deployed yet. Um, he was supposed to get deployed last year, but um, his unit didn't get picked. Next question is, is it harder letting people on base? No, it's actually not hard. Only thing you really necessarily have to do is... Um, before you come on post, first you got to let somebody know that you're coming. You can't just come, you know. Like, say if, like, one of my family members wanted to come, hopefully they will let me know that they're coming, uh, which I'm pretty sure they would let me know. But um, you will have to go to the visitor center, and they give you, like, a pass to get on. They'll check, like, your background, all of that good stuff. Make sure that you're qualified to be able to go on post and then after that you just go on post and you say how long you're staying for and that's it so that's really not hard at all how does your husband's work schedule work um his work schedule is pretty much a regular civilian work schedule if you're working monday through friday nine to five that's his schedule um but he has to get up around 5 30 ish because he has pt in the morning so he'll get up at 5 30 he has to leave out here by like 6 15 ish to be there by 6 30 and then he does his pt and then he comes home take a shower and then go to work at 9 30 and then be home before five usually sometimes he'll be home before five or a little after five but that's literally his work schedule what is your advice to anyone who is in a relationship with somebody leaving for basic training my advice to anybody is to spend as much quality time together before they leave because when you leave um you know like I stated before me and him were always together every day and talking to each other every day on the phone texting all of that type of stuff when he goes when he went to basic training he didn't have his phone couldn't do anything and the only thing that I was able to communicate with him was through um, letters, writing letters. So when he goes, he'll um, or she goes, uh, you'll get like a, he'll, they'll be able to send off like a little format of how you have to write your le like letters and how you know how it's supposed to be written technically, and then um, that's it. So write as much as you can to them because every letter keeps them motivated and pushes them to keep going because they do have times when they feel like they can't do it because my husband said that it felt like he was just alone by himself and so when he read letters from like our families and stuff like that it gave him that push and always in your letters try to write motivational uh quotes or scriptures to help him you know stay strong you know what i mean because every little bit counts. You know what I mean? And then, um, so write as many letters as you can. Try to spend as much quality time as you can with them. And keep your, um, keep yourself busy. I know it's going to be hard because it felt like three months. He was gone for three months, but it felt like, um, 
I didn't really feel like it was that long because I stayed mo I stayed going. I moved from where I was living, um, uh, and I moved to Baltimore. So I Baltimore is a big area and so I always had something to do. Um so I didn't keep myself enclosed or nothing like that. Yeah, I thought about him every single day. I would look at our pictures and stuff, you know, videos that we had together just to keep myself going and knowing that I know he's going to be okay and stuff like that and try to have like a close relationship with hit whoever other side's family. Try to have like a relationship with them because, you know, that's their loved one going off. And, you know, they'll have times when they think about them and all that type of stuff. So, you know, try to do that. So, write many letters. Try to spend as much time before they go. Um, and make sure, like, your trust and stuff is there. Communicate as much as you can before you go off. Before whoever goes off into the military. Um, so that would be my advice. Um, what is the hardest part of being married into the military? I, okay, so I think the hardest thing being married into the military is transforming from civilian life to military life because they have standards, they have structure here. You can't do as much stuff as you want if you were a civilian. You know what I mean? So um, th I think that was the hardest thing to do, like adjusting myself into military life and getting myself from out of the civilian mindset to a military mindset what branch of service is your husband is uh husband in sorry he's in the army did you two decide on what date you were going to get married on no actually how our proposal went how my proposal went um it was over the phone Literally, we had, like, a conversation. I was on FaceTime with him and everything like that. And he was telling me at the time where he was going to get stationed at. So I was like, hey, where are you getting stationed at? He was like, I'm so excited. Like, I'm almost done with Korea because he was in South Korea at the time. And he was like, I know where I'm getting stationed at next. And I was like, so where are you getting stationed at? And I, was, I can remember it just like this. And he was like, Louisiana, Louisiana fish, you know, from off of Popeye's, Popeye's commercial when they do that. Um, so that's, that was like his hint of that, uh, his next duty station. I pretty much told me where his next duty station was. And then he asked me to marry him. He was like, that's where we're going next. And then he asked me to marry him. So I didn't get like an actual proposal, like the traditional proposals. Um, it was still special to me, even though it was over the phone. Um, and when he got home, since we already knew, I had to like rush. We had to rush to get like our marriage done because he had to be there with like two to three weeks. We had to go there two three weeks prior. Um, so we got married. Um, it was a like quick. We went to the whole courthouse, did our marriage ceremony. We had his mom there for like support um, to be the witness of our marriage. And it was like a really quick ceremony because we had a lot of stuff to do and we wanted to make sure that our family, we got to spend as much time with our families before we left. So, um, we didn't have a set date. Um, but we will eventually have like a normal wedding, hopefully one day soon. Do you, you, and still do you, or did you, um, ever get nervous with your husband being in the military? Um, I did get nervous at certain points in times because there were certain points of times, um, with a lot of stuff that was going on in the world, I was scared, um, that I, that I would get like a phone call or something and I, it, you know, something bad were to happen. So yes, I do get nervous about that type of stuff. Um, and I did at first get nervous because I thought he was going to leave me. I'm being really honest. I know, but, like, I thought he was going to leave me. So, overall, him being nervous, like, now, no, I don't feel nervous at all. Because we, I know where we stand in our marriage. I know where we stand as individuals and stuff like that. So, no, I don't get nervous right now at this point in time. Um, but before I did, just saying, like, I really was. It says, how did you feel knowing that your husband was going in the military? I felt excited, for one thing, because at the time... He didn't know what he wanted to do. And so, 
he needed some self-discipline and they give you a lot of self-discipline um he was already confident and uh bold with you know stern with himself but he needed he he jokes a lot he still does it. um but it kind of mellowed him out you know what i mean um he has some self-discipline he you know better he's better as a man like all of that training and stuff like that really helped him now into like reality of like different things that's been going on in our lives um i don't know what just happened i think my belt just turned off if you heard like a little beat my belt turned off um but i I was excited because he would get a chance to travel go to different places that um he would never be able to you know go if we were home maybe um but it's just a new experience get out of um the norm stop being stuck in the norm uh and expanding your wings and that's what i felt like i was most excited about he was very pumped to go um in the military but also kind of sad because you know he wouldn't be able to see his family all the time but how is it making friends in the military life or and what are there are any of them your ages i'm sorry i'm stuttering all over my words but um it's uh i do have friends here um one of my friends that i became really close with is her name's jasmine um and she's a little tad bit younger than me but um if you see her you wouldn't think that she was um younger than me but she is fine keep my friends kind of the same age limit but also i have friends that are older too if you get what i'm saying it's a good experience because you get to meet really genuine people nice people loving people uh and you know they tell you stories about different places that they've been to and all of that good stuff so that's what i enjoy and i love 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 hearing like military stories from military soldiers um their families and stuff like that will you have your first baby while your husband is still active huh um i would love to have a child now that would help uh you know that'll make him reconsider either re-enlisting or getting out you know what i mean either way it will have like a plan like we'll have a plan of how uh how things will work out for our lives i would love to have a child now i would <laughs> but i'm not rushing anything when god sees fit that's when i'll how frequent can letters be sent while the other half is in basic training you can send literally i sent wrote a letter every single day and send it so i wrote a letter one night and then i'll send it the next day i was writing letters every single day every day the more letters you send um it it just helped me vent to him like he was there like when i moved to baltimore i like uh told him about like the scenery of how it was literally i told him i remember in the letter i think he still got his letters um i told him that literally every every two every minute or so you'll see ambulance rise by uh you'll um hear the noise like the noise was trish like it was crazy you could tell that was like city life like that's that's the type of life i like um and i just kept telling him like talking about like different places i've been to like sceneries and everything like that and you know it makes him makes them imagine like how it would be if he was living there you know what i mean i i was so vivid with my letters that it was i could write a story about it if i really wanted to that's how vivid it was um but you can write as many as you want write a lot the more you write i don't know how i wrote a lot of letters but i think he had received i don't know how many i forgot how many he said he received but I received five, four to five letters from him. Um, and every letter I was get so, like, my first letter, I wish I recorded myself. Uh, my first letter that I ever got from him, I was jumping up and down. I passed right out in the steps. 
I was so happy. You can follow like the um the military pages, uh basic training pages and they'll post like different things that they've done and then um pictures. So I have like pictures of him when he was in basic training, like from the very beginning he went in to the very end of when he came out. Uh so what was your biggest fear being him being in the military? My biggest fear was of um he wasn't gonna make it home. That was that still is my biggest fear. Like if he gets deployed and something were to happen, him not being able to come home or getting that letter or having them, you know, because I think they have people come to your house and they tell you that they have passed on and everything. That would look fear. And then another biggest, my other biggest fear was that he was going to find, I know that sounds so dumb and childish, but it is actually true because it's, it has happened um having people like him leaving finding somebody else that was way different than me that he liked more all of that type of stuff i i know this childish but that was another because you get people in your head like i let a lot of people in my head was like saying that oh girl he gonna he gonna be doing him you know he's gonna be talking to other girls messing with other girls so you need to live your life don't be dwelling on that type of stuff which caused a lot of problems in our relationship just because i was listening to people in my head and like just thoughts in my head that was telling me different things and uh yeah that would be another story. I'll probably do like a story time and polish stuff like that. So where are you currently stationed at right now? I am stationed at Fort Polk, Louisiana. I'm ready to get out of here. <laughs> Next question. Is the commissary cheaper than any other grocery stores? Um, You know what's really cheap at the commissary? The meats. Oh my God. You can get some really good cheap deals on meats. They even have it like big boxes of ribs like baby back ribs all types of ribs they'll have it in a big box for nine dollars you cannot beat that bro like you cannot beat that i always be getting ribs i be cooking ribs all the time um but their meats are really cheap but everything else i could probably find it somewhere cheaper um like that since i work at the commissary uh it's a it's easy for me to shop there because I know when, like, different stuff is going to be posted out. Um, when uh, different things is going to happen. So, I already know that. So, it, it, I mean, I'm used to shopping there now because I work there. But before, I never shopped at the commissary unless I forgot some stuff. And that's that was my last resort going there to get it. Uh, but other than that, I really don't like shopping there. I just like to shop there for meats and everything else. Uh, I can go off post to get. Are you scared if he gets deployed? Yes, I am scared because, like I stated before, I feel like I don't want to get that letter or call saying that, um, or them coming to my house and saying that, you know, he didn't make it. Do you think having a kid on base would be difficult? No, because they have so many different resources to help you with uh, having a kid. I wouldn't have a kid on post though. I would always, I would always go off post. Um, if I were to have a kid, just two stories that I've heard here. Um, did y'all ever break up while he was in the military? Yes, we did break up when we were um, while he was in the military. That would be another story. That could be a story time. I'll tell you about it in story time coming up soon. <laughs> what? Was it easy telling your family that you were getting married and leaving? Whew. That night, I can remember that night like it was yesterday. <laughs> when I told my mom, because I literally sat down. It was like maybe a week before he came home. And I told my mom that I was leaving. Um, and she was like, what? No, you're not. And I was like, I'm dead serious. I'm leaving. When he, when he comes home, we have already discussed it. da 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 and I'm leaving when he comes home. When he gets ready to move to Louisiana, I'm going with him. She was, she was feisty with me. <laughs> she was feisty with me, but at the same time, 
Um, she was like, I can't tell you what to do. I mean, you're grown enough to make your own des- decisions. Just be careful. But telling my brothers, like my older brother for one, was the, oh God, is he like lectured me the whole entire time. I, I, I was like, goodness gracious. And now he's about to get married. Um, soon so. He like had a whole lecture. I think he, I think the reason why he was doing that because I didn't tell anybody. Only the person I told was my mom, and I told my mom not to tell anybody. Oh, well. Like they would have been hurt. They were hurt by it because I was, you know, I'm the only girl. I'm their sister, and they just want what's best, and you know what I mean. Um, want me to stay safe, all that type of stuff. And I did cry. I cried when I left. That was like the hardest thing. I. I cried when I left to go to Baltimore, and I definitely cried moving from he- from Maryland to Louisiana. I cried so hard because I was gonna. I know I was gonna miss my mom, and I do miss my mom and my brothers and all of them. And my brother cried over me. <laughs> A bird can't always stay in the nest. They gotta spread their wings and fly. You know what I mean? So. And I would never go back to Maryland. <laughs> I just like living outside of Maryland. Because you get a different feel of life. You're so sheltered in the norm. Being in that same environment. And you're not. And I felt like I wasn't progressing progressing there. And now that I moved here. I've been more open to life. I've been more. There's been more opportunities. I work for the federal government. I could not get a job working for the federal, federal government at home. I couldn't do it. So this experience, this lifestyle that I'm living, all of this is like an eye opener and a blessing for me because this is like a dream come true. Whew. I'm glad I'm done with them questions because Lord, that took a lot of breath out of me. <laughs> but um, that's it for this video, guys. Um, Hopefully I answer some more like a uh, gist of your questions. I'll probably have like another Q&A military um about the military with my husband just a reminder y'all you are loved you are kind you are smart you are beautiful you are handsome you are courageous you're amazing don't ever let nobody tell you otherwise okay have a sense of gratitude uh, I caught myself because the last video i didn't do a gratitude time um so I'm going to do my sense of gratitude. I thank God for my life, health, and strength. I get. I thank God for um, just being God. Um, blessing me to do amazing things. Blessing my husband with uh, different things in his life that's been revealed to him. Um, I thank God for life because there was times in my life where you know, I wanted to take my own life, but God spared it and blessed me and had people surrounding me with love and care. Um, I thank God to be able to share my experiences with you guys uh, about, you know, me being a military wife. Um, I just thank God for his grace and his mercy. Oh, I thank him each and every day for his grace and his mercy. Um traveling mercy um getting back back and forth home uh i thank god for just his hands of protection around me and my husband and my family uh i just thank him i just thank him for being god and i thank him for a sense of peace and happiness i'm so happy with my life right now y'all just don't understand and i thank god for new opportunities like for me to create new ideas for um that i want to try to pursue i was uh, thinking the other day about like homeless people and uh you know and they're not as fortunate as people like me you know what i mean um different trials and eras had came in their lives and i i just felt so bad like i feel really really bad for them and so I felt like, you know what? I'm going to start making care packages. Um, because 
not everybody is fortunate. You know what I mean? People don't always have the right supplies, the right things, the right foods, all of that type of stuff. They don't have that. So I said, I was like, you know what? I'm about to start doing care packages. And I prayed and asked God for guidance with it and everything. And right now I have three care packages already that I'm about to start sending out. Um, and um, I'm going to be selling them. And then also I'm going to be doing giveaways with care packages. Okay, so what you have to do in order to enter the care package giveaway is first you have to subscribe. If you have not already subscribed, you have to subscribe to my channel. If you already subscribed, um, then, you know, make sure you like the video, okay? Point blank, period. Comment one thing in the comment section below. One thing that you're grateful for, for gratitude time. Since I did my gratitude time, I want you to be able to do gratitude time along with me so we can get that, you know, thankfulness out and thank God for what he has done in our lives so you have to follow me on ig at underscore adrian 14 underscore i will have my instagram info down below on the screen so that way if you forget or you know you want to go ahead and jump into it then um and my then name. i will have a picture of my thumbnail on ig in order for you to get your spot and enter the giveaway you have to comment done right after it's all done once i see everything i'm going to be looking and i'm going to be watching because i want to be able to engage back in uh, with you guys to let you know that i am thankful and grateful for you guys for supporting me and i want to be able to engage back and forth with you and talk to you pretty much so, so first if you have not already subscribed make sure you subscribe to the channel that's number one number two you have to like the video okay <laughs> number three comment at least one thing that you are grateful for um for gratitude time and then step number four follow me on ig at adrian underscore four what oh no little underscore adrian 14 underscore and under my thumbnail, step number five, under my picture of my thumbnail, you have to comment done. Okay? Um, I will be announcing my giveaway winner in two weeks. So you have enough time to prepare yourselves. <laughs> and that gives me enough time to prepare my box. So that way you can kind of see how it will look. And um, yeah. So, I love you guys. I appreciate every one of you guys for supporting me. I love you. I love, 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 love. I love you. I love you. <laughs> or like Martin says, I love ya. I love ya. <laughs> but seriously, y'all, I love y'all. I am Adri. I'm ending this video. This is Adri, and I'm signing out. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.